thank you. Good morning. Secretary Gadara, thank you. And uh, and Rivers Ben, welcome. How great is this? Woo! I met a new friend this morning, and uh, she said, what are we going to do today? A and I said, we're going to have fun. And she leaned over and said, I like having fun. I like having fun, too. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, Superintendent Coons, thank you for your leadership. Uh, and, and I have to say, with Secretary, all the, I see our whole cabinet here, thank everybody for coming. Secretary Littell, thank you uh, for sitting up on stage with us. Um, thank you. We've got a lot going on together. And most importantly, uh, I just want to also thank the many, many people who have been engaged in this most important journey. And uh, I'm so excited that we are at this moment where we can share our thinking, our aspirations, and collectively march forward in addressing one of the most important challenges, not just in the Commonwealth, but across the nation. I also want to thank the First Lady. Suzanne, thank you so much for your inspiration, guidance, and counsel along the way. It's not time to be timid. It's time to be bold. It's time to chart a course that, in fact, addresses, as I said, one of the most vexing challenges today. One of the most vexing challenges that I believe stands in the way of a brighter future for all Virginians. And so therefore, around the basic concept that there is nothing more important than ensuring a quality education for our children, empowering parents, embracing work, and the job growth that is happening across the Commonwealth, these foundational building blocks, these building blocks for families, these building blocks for opportunity come together this morning in building blocks for families. Let me take us back just a moment. You see, two years ago, Virginia was ranked in the bottom third in the nation in job growth coming out of the pandemic. We, in fact, had watched our labor force shrink. We had, we had nearly 150,000 Virginians exit the labor force. And yet, with opportunity and aspiration and collective effort, we have in fact seen Virginians come back into the labor force in record numbers. Over this time period, we went from, yes, bottom third in the nation in job growth, to 23 months later, number three in the nation in job growth. Um, what that required was a collective effort from all of us, but also allowing Virginians to reach their dreams and to re-enter a workforce that underpins, I believe, the most aspirational state in the nation. But on top of that, we also have seen dreams of families come back alive and the opportunity to experience one of the realities that there is dignity in work. So as we all came together and address the complex problems of opening up opportunity, we in fact notice the realities of also a changing requirement. And I am so grateful for the tremendous work the tremendous work that the Commission has done in order to highlight, yes, the great underpinnings to having the very best child care and early education system in the nation and what we need to do to make it sustainable. You see, this work has been going on for years in understanding that we, in fact, need to provide this. But during the pandemic, pandemic dollars from the federal government were used to get it started. But the reality is that wasn't sustainable. And the reality is that in March 2024, without significant reforms to improve the long-term viability of our child care programs, we would otherwise see children simply being kicked out of these most important, most important collaborations that enable, again, families to realize their dreams. 
And so we can't leave families, parents, and their children without options. That's what today is all about. Today is about addressing, addressing the child care crisis and getting our children back on track in the classrooms and parents who have come into the workforce to be allowed to stay there and to open up opportunities for all of the future families that want to avail themselves of the opportunities in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. You see, one thing we know, particularly, is that moms feel the impact and the challenge here most acutely. I stopped for a minute. My mom was my hero. My mother uh, did amazing things, and I remember her balancing all of the many demands that life placed on us as a family. And I remember her coming home from her job at St. Mary's Hospital or over at now uh, VCU, which was MCV at the time, picking me up at daycare, and then once again embracing her mom role. And so it's not surprising that when we see the reports that have been clearly underpinning this recognition that a total of 46% of mothers who remain unemployed after having left the workforce in 2021, they left due to childcare issues. In another study, women who are in the workforce cite the two things that are at the top of their challenge list, lack of flexibility and lack of childcare support. This is about families. This is about moms. And Virginians shouldn't have to worry about getting their children the care they need when they're at work. And unfortunately, so many do. And so while we have an enormous journey in front of us, I believe that we are taking a bold step, a bold step to put in place the building blocks for families. The Commission on Early Childhood Care and Education has done extraordinary work. And I want to echo the appreciation to all of our legislative colleagues, but it also reflects the input from school divisions and from providers who understand this ecosystem so that today as we make this announcement, we reflect a collaborative engagement with the best thinking. Let me walk you through a few key parts of building blocks for families. First, this plan enables choice for parents who are juggling the demands of life, family, work, empowering parents to choose, whether that is home care providers and public school preschool or community co-ops or private day centers. Importantly, by expanding the requirements that parents work in order to participate in this plan, we are focusing on the considerable investment, we're focusing our considerable investment on parents who are working to keep all of those balls in the air as they juggle them. And we are ensuring good stewardship of the resources required to make this successful. Second, Building Blocks for Families also supports affordability. In fact, low-income working families are going to be most supported. Families that currently receive support will continue to have access to early childhood and after-school programs. So important. Third, Building Blocks for Families supports workforce participation, specifically for working mothers in Virginia who know, who I know and we all know, are hardest hit when child care options are limited. Fourth, we're empowering the development of our youngest Virginians. Virginians from, from birth to five-year-olds, where quality matters and attendance matters. We will continue to measure what's happening across all of these learning environments and partner with parents to make sure our youngest learners are engaged and they're present. 
Fourth, fifth, we are innovating to solve our most pressing challenges, making it easier for families. And let me just describe specifically two innovations, the digital wallet and the fund for child care deserts. First, the digital wallet. We know that Virginians, Virginia will be first again. And I've said over and over again, Virginians lead, we don't follow. And here we are again, first in the nation to offer a statewide digital wallet platform to enable local governments, employers, philanthropy, and others who will contribute towards this great need. Every family will be able to get a digital wallet and the platform will make it easier for them to find care and direct care to where it fits their family the best. Second, on our fund for child care deserts, we are launching a new $25 million capital fund to reduce child care deserts. Our aspiration is truly to follow the great leadership out of Southwest Virginia that came together with public and private resources to renovate an ex and a, basically a building that was no longer being used and transform it into a hub of both child care opportunity, workforce development, and on top of that collaboration. And we believe this model is one that can be replicated across the Commonwealth to those areas that need it most. My aspiration is that we can create through this fund capacity for 3,000 children. Friends, this will require a lot of work and a lot of collaboration. But when we bring business and we bring local and state government support for capital up front and we create a sustainable system, we can move mountains. The impact on communities, I think, will be vast. Communities from Southwest Virginia to Hampton Roads to Petersburg, even some of our largest areas like Fairfax. Next, building blocks for families is fiscally sustainable. And this is so important. In each of the next two fiscal years, we will invest more than $440 million from the state resources in making sure that building blocks for Virginia families takes off. That includes an increase in the state investment of $180 million each year. Friends, this is hugely important. At the heart of this is ensuring that we continue to serve the population being served today and that dollars follow the children on their parents' best wishes. Finally, the plan sustains investments in early childhood workforce. We know that teachers matter, and we know that we don't have enough. And so the plan includes scholarships for working teachers and a nationally recognized child care teacher incentive that helps attract and retain top-notch child care teachers like those we have with us today. These building blocks, these building blocks for Virginia's families are at the center of the future of the Commonwealth being the best place to live and work and raise a family. It embraces simple and shared truths, that there's dignity in work, that strong families are a critical building block to parents being able to make great decisions for their children. And fundamentally, we must build on an ecosystem full of opportunity an ecosystem that can lift up all Virginians. The working mom who's taking extra classes at Northern Virginia Community College to grow her resume and professional opportunities. The working parents who want to see their child receive the best possible education. The small business owner who wants to grow from 
two employees to 10 to 100. This is about opportunity for success, and it starts with success for families. Friends, growth is a good thing. Participation is a good thing. And an opportunity-based economy is a good thing. And so I challenge all of us today on, on December the 7th that we have to come together and march forward, recognizing that no plan is perfect. But let me tell you, this one is pretty darn good. We are already seeing economic growth, educational excellence, and new pathways come to life across the Commonwealth of Virginia so that Virginians can chase their dreams and Virginia can become what we all know she will be the best place to live, work, and raise a family. Removing roadblocks and enabling building blocks is what today is all about. We will have families availing themselves of best-in-class child care. We will have the next generation of leaders. There's a governor in here, a lieutenant governor, an attorney general, who will be excited about attending school because we will bring together parents, the private sector providers, choice, partnership, and it will become an overwhelming force. Again, I want to thank everyone today. You've all had a hand in coming to this moment. And now we need two hands, both your feet, and everything you've got in order to deliver it. And that's where I am most confident, because this is where Virginians do their very, very best work. Because when we support families, we support Virginia. May God bless you during this holiday season. May we recognize that the many blessings that we have are ours only as stewards, and it's our job to come together and deliver them to the next generation. And it is my pleasure to invite the next generation to come up and share with us a few tunes to remind us that it is all about them. Thank you all very, very much.